would do another video about my ulcerative colitis. I thought it might help anyone out there who also has colitis or Crohn's disease or any other form of inflammatory bowel disease if it's relevant to you. I have done a video about my ulcerative colitis before, I will leave a link down below and it was all about the different things that I live with on a day-to-day -day basis and it's been a really long time since I made a video about it. I know I talk about it fairly regularly in my weekly vlogs but I haven't actually done any other videos apart from that one. So today I thought I would do a video on how I cope with my colitis on a day-to-day -day basis, the things I do to kind of help me get through it and I thought it could help quite a few people out there. It might not be relevant to everyone since people experience these diseases differently and have different triggers and different symptoms and things like that. So if you think you would find this helpful then please do keep watching. I have notes so I don't forget anything. <laughs> So the first thing I would say is to take it seriously and I don't mean that in a condescending way or in anything kind of like derogatory. So when I was first diagnosed back in 2016 I personally had a hard time coming to terms with what colitis actually was and how it would affect my life overall and I would say I definitely didn't take it as seriously as I do now and I think that did have an impact on my health and I didn't kind of you know rest when I needed to, I wasn't properly taking my medication and I didn't realise how serious it could be. So that's the only reason why I say this and I feel like it's probably the most important one. I don't know how many other people kind of do struggle with you know kind of how serious it can be. So this is based on my own experience. So I would say rest when you need to. There is absolutely nothing wrong than having a rest day. If you want to spend a day in bed, if you're feeling pretty shit, then do it if you can. If you're able to talk to your boss, see if you can change your shift, see if you can arrange like different hours and things like that to try and cope. Take your medication. I know from experience a lot of people do struggle with medication, especially the more unpleasant ones. I know I definitely do and when I haven't taken medication I do get worse and things like that. I can't stress enough how important medication is for managing these diseases. Stick to all your regular appointments, see your GP often, don't let things wait like I did. I took too long to go and see my GP which is one of the reasons why um, it got as bad as it was for me when I was first diagnosed. So I would definitely say you know if you have any symptoms then go straight away to your GP. If you think you could be coming into a flare don't wait. Go see someone straight away and get the medication quicker. The next thing I would say which is just as important as the other points I just made is to be completely and 110% open and honest with any kind of medical professional you're talking to. There's absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about, nothing to be ashamed about, doesn't matter what it is. They've probably heard it before from someone. Doesn't matter how severe it is, doesn't matter how mild it is, if there's something that you're struggling with, if there's any kind of symptom you think they need to be aware of, even if you're not sure if they need to be aware of it, say it anyway, it doesn't hurt anyone to tell them. Everything you say to them is in confidence as well. It's not like they're gonna go away and like tell anyone. They'll tell people who need to know and they'll make sure you get the medical help that you need. They'll make sure things are pushed further. One of the best things I ever did was start taking in photographs of like inside the toilet so they could say exactly how much blood there was and things like that. And that kind of helped them get a better idea of what it's like for me rather than me just saying yeah there's a lot of blood and trying to guess how much they could actually see it and they actually found it very helpful and they were able to boost up my medication based on what they were seeing and also tell them about how your symptoms affect you and how it affects you like physically mentally and emotionally you know if you're struggling with any kind of uh, mental health issues around coping with colitis they can also refer you for support and help that way some kind of therapy and things like that so please do not worry about anything like, I've told my GI everything I've told them when I've had accidents I've told them exactly what it's like what it bloody smells like everything like that I'm already quite an open person so I found it quite easy to do that but if you can then then please do just tell them the next thing I would say is to plan and prepare for everything. If you're not an organised person then make sure you have like a little bag that you can take out with you when you're going out somewhere. I would say to pack spare clothes, pack your medication or have spare medication if you can, pack some baby wipes because you never know when you're going to get to a toilet that has no toilet paper or if the toilet paper is rough as hell. I always look into the area I'm going to if I'm going for a meal with someone or with some friends then I'll look at where the toilets are in a shopping centre I'll have a little look at where the disabled toilets are on a map or something like that which you can normally find on websites. That's one thing that's definitely helped me quite a lot is just being prepared for if your illness might take a turn. Sometimes you might not even need that stuff you might go and be completely fine the whole time you're there. You just don't want to get kind of caught short when you are out and you'll probably feel a lot more comfortable getting on with your day-to-day -day life if you have these kind of preparations in place. 
The next point I would say is to involve your friends and family or anyone around you that you think needs to be aware of everything that's going on. Like I said before, I'm a very open person. I mean, I'm here on the internet making a video about this, but I tell my friends and family everything. I tell them exactly what it's like, exactly what the symptoms are. I've literally sent photos of inside the toilet to my boyfriend when I'm having a bad day. He's very understanding, he's absolutely brilliant. I can't fault him in any way, shape or form around coping with this illness. I've showed my family photos so that they understand what it's like. I mean, I'm not saying you need to show your family photos or anything like that, but I do think that personally helped me. So, for example, I showed my nana just the other week and she looked at it and she went, oh my goodness, I did not realise that there would be that much coming out of you. I didn't realise it was that bad. And then from then, she kind of seemed more understanding towards it and seemed more helpful with me, which was nice. If you need to ask for help as well, it, it's really helpful if they kind of know what they could help with. There's lots of resources on the Crohn's and Colitis website that has like leaflets and things like that with information about IBD. And there's lots of resources on there for friends and family too, so I will leave a link to that website down below as well. It's great. I remember when I first got diagnosed and I was learning about this illness myself, I gave the same leaflets that I was reading to my family and then they went away and read them and kind of, you know, tried to educate themselves around it because it's not a very well-known disease. There's also leaflets on that website for employers and things like that and how they can kind of, you know, adjust working environments and things like that to help people with these illnesses. And please remember, if you're at work still and coping with this illness, your employer has a right to make sure that your workplace is accessible for you so that you have access to the things you need to continue to work. So if you need access to a toilet, they can move, I don't know, if you work in an office, move your desk closer to a toilet if you need it or make sure you have access to one, things like that. That's their responsibility to do that as an employer. And the last point I would like to make is don't let it ruin your life. There are lots of mistakes I've made since I got diagnosed, but there's also lots of things I've done to try and improve my life for the better. I personally cope by being open and talking about it. I also cope with humour, so... I mean, I'm normally quite like a jokey person anyway, but I'll kind of, you know, make fun of myself and that kind of just lightens the situation for me. I've got quite a close group of friends, so I can talk openly about it and we all kind of joke around about me having this illness. And that kind of helps me feel more normal, I suppose. And not everyone can be like that or feel that way. There's definitely my fair share of days where I feel really rubbish, where I feel like I don't want to go out, where I feel physically unable to go out. It's not letting it ruin your life if you need to have rest, if you need to turn down going to something. If you need a day where you stay in bed all day and it's going to make you feel better, then do it. Personally, I don't ever think there's ever like a wasted day. So if I'm having like a rest day, then it's not a waste of a day if it's for my own health and for my own benefit. I'll often use it to kind of catch up on TV, catch up on emails and things like that. I decided to change my career and go back to college one day a week. Fair enough. Um, I can struggle some days with college. When I feel up to it, then I'll go to the gym. If I don't feel up to it, I do not feel bad about not going that's all I can kind of stress is don't feel bad if you are unable to do something because of your health. If I need to tell a friend that I can't meet them for lunch or if I can't go to the cinema or anything like that, that kind of goes hand in hand with being honest with them and involving them and kind of just being open because if you make them aware of everything that you cope with, then they are more likely to be understanding. And I know that's not the same for everyone. I mean, there are always going to be people who maybe have a hard time getting to grips with it and things like that. I've met my fair share of people um, who just didn't care what it was like for me, um, which is why I quit my last job. But yeah, now I have cut out all the toxic people in my own life and I've surrounded myself with people who you know, try to understand, try their best to help me and things like that, I do feel like things are heading in the right direction. And like I said earlier in the video, I know this might not be relevant to everyone with this illness, but I thought if I could help maybe just one person through this video, then that's a job well done. These are more just things that I do for myself that just could be useful to someone else. So I thought, why not make a video on it? As always, any kind of links that I think might be necessary will all be down below. Please go check it out. I have quite a few blog posts about colitis and Crohn's disease. I will leave a link to my blog down below. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like down below, subscribe to see more like this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!